Okay, Ernest, Star Wars came out this weekend, so I think for this review we need to do something special. Something with Star Wars? At least something like Star Wars. And you know what thing always reminds me of Star Wars? Huh? Vampires. Explain. Listen up, Rangers! Welcome to the Geek Chest! My name's Steve. My name is Ernest. And today we're going over the 1985 anime movie Vampire Hunter D. This is a movie based off of an actual book, like a late novel series. I'm pretty sure you got one somewhere around here, don't uh, you? Oh, yeah, I think I do. Actually, I got two other versions of it, because we have the original novel, which is awesome, because it was written by... I'm going to so butcher this. Hideyuki Kikuchi. And illustrated by Yoshikata Amano. Oh, no. Which, if you guys didn't know, the guy that illustrated this actually does the Final Fantasy artwork. I have an art book where it has like really? all of his encompassing stuff, and it's actually really, really pretty. And you even get some of the artwork actually inside of the book, if I can find anything. Steve, I think we watched the wrong movie. I don't remember this chick flying around naked everywhere. <laughs> right? <laughs> Unacceptable. Yeah, like, here's a quick little illustration of some of the stuff that's actually inside of the book. And then we also have the manga, which came out a lot more recently. Which is pretty much just this summed up into pretty illustrations. No, really pretty illustrations. Oh, boy. Look at that. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Like, in the manga, it tries to replicate the art style a little bit. Not to not to gra as great a success, but it's still really awesome. They but, tried. Yeah, they tried. But we're here to talk about the anime, which actually kind of ties in pretty well to the actual novelization. Which is something that's really nice. So, for the plot of Vampire Hunter D, it's set in the distant future of 12,090 AD, where after a bunch of wars, we didn't turn out so good. And then, out of the darkness, mutants, monsters, and vampires come out of it and take over the world essentially. And eventually, they. humans start rising up out of the ashes of this and start taking their place back, which starts becoming more of a western. <laughs> Which I like it. Because what's kind of cool is you see a lot of futuristic settings in this, but it's still very old-fashioned looking as well. Because there's like, you just see like the farmhouse, but inside the farmhouse there's like fancy dangle Star Wars technology, and it's awesome. Don't you judge that Star Wars technology. Yeah, but what happens is Doris, after hunting down a dinosaur-looking thing that was attacking their, their herd, uh, she goes into the realm of Count Lee's, which he finds her, drinks her blood, wants to make her his wife, and then she enlists the help of Vampire Hunter D in order to kill him. That's about it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the plot, and that's just D trying to protect her while also going after Count Lee. Which, if you guys haven't seen the movie, super violent, super old, because it's uh, 1985, so the art style seems definitely outdated a little bit. But then again, it's one of those that's still awesome because everything's hand-drawn. So, yeah. I don't know. I kind of like it because it's got like a lot of reference to, towards like Trigun and yeah. Or I guess you could say Trigun has a lot of references towards it. Yeah, that works because it's 1985 when this came out. Yeah, and then the book series I think came out in 1983, back in Japan. The manga series I forget exactly when this started coming out. Yeah, the manga came out. This is the first edition. It came out 2007. So it's definitely a little bit older of an anime, which we kind of want to do something a little bit different because we've been doing a lot of newer ones. Yeah. I think the only ones we really talk about that are older are like Yu Hakusho. And that one has a lot of views, so we got to keep it up, you know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Aww. But for the plot of Vampire Hunter D, it's really sweet. But in the movie, it kind of jumps around a lot, though. It's not the most cohesive plot I've ever seen. It's 80s. Give me yeah, but then kind of again, it's, like, it's an older movie, so I kind of give it a little bit of slack. But it tends to kind of like jump to scenes without really having a whole lot of transition. And also, I love the fact of this movie is that she has to fall in love with D. Because in the book, it kind of makes sense because they have a lot of dialogue and she like gets to build up a little bit of an affection towards her. I was going to say, because like, like, this movie has like nothing. It was just like instantly she's like, I love you. Yeah, my favorite thing too is she's just like, I love you. He's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Han Solo. <laughs> It, it was just I, I don't know like that's one of the things that bug me it's like how she fell in love with him it's just like no it's explanation it's cause somebody asked yeah no explanation <laughs> at all the doctor was like do you love him she's like no no yes what do you mean <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about 
Also, I love the outfits in this anime, too. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. She's just a skink all the way through. She does <laughs> not give up on I that image. I want to say that. She seems very proud of herself, but just the attire. Like, you literally see her, pretty much her panties coming through the skirt. <laughs> Anytime there is she's no running, skirt. It's just like a little cover to cover yeah, it's a like leg a cloth on the side. right here. That's, that's all you really get. That's all you need, I guess. If you're going to whore yourself yeah, out. Which she's also- like, I don't have a lot to pay you with, but you can sleep with me. And three meals a day. Winning. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. That was like a winning anime already. I was like, I'm into this. Let's watch this. Oh, yeah. Then you get to see, like, they have laser guns and stuff with bayonets on the front of them. Oh, it's so awesome. And all the creatures you get to see in this anime, too, where you get, like... There's a lot of different kinds. Yeah, because you just, like, at the beginning sections, you get weird dinosaur-looking thing, werewolf, vampires, mist creatures. Don't forget the slime. The one that was trying to kill him towards the end, like the slime thingy? Yeah, it's the mist monster. That's a, That was mist? That was a mist monster. Man, we need that movie in HD. <laughs> yeah, we watched it on DVD, and like, the quality... It's definitely... It, it seems more suited to VHS. Because some of it's kind of hard to watch, because it's also really dark. But again, like, the art style is still super pretty. It has a lot of very awesome imagery. But one thing I do want to point out is if you guys haven't seen it and you're a little bit younger, there is definitely a lot of violence... Blood and sexuality in this. Boobies! There's a lot of boobies. But eight. A lot, a lot of like 85 boobies, so it's so, not like something oh. you're like super excited to see, you know, like nowadays. No. Like they look like little milk duds. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> delicious. Also, I love there's like the one scene in there too where she's, uh, <laughs> where the doctor, spoilers, becomes a vampire. And he like takes her whip and then just randomly rips her shirt. You're like, booby! And then it's just like instantly fixed in the next scene and you don't see it ever again. God, gotta love editing. But for the characters, for Doris, she's okay. Your stereotypical kind of like strong woman type, yet doesn't really show very much strength in this either. No, she's weak. Yeah, because you get some times where she's like trying to be badass, but then she's like, like with D, like she's like attacking, like, oh, you seem pretty tough there. Give me your sword. And then he just like, Force powers his way out of uh, the electrical whip. And then she's like, ah! Just falls to the ground. She's like, oh god, I need you to rescue me. I like the brother. At least he was more (laughs) manly. The little boy. Yeah. There's a guy with a kid in this. And he looks up to D, which is super adorable. And then you have D himself. Which is your silent protagonist. Doesn't talk a whole lot in this. Pretty much he only really speaks his mind when it's something important. Or he has to cheer somebody up. In a sense. But he is a badass in this. With his giant long bended sword. It's kind of like a weird katana but super elongated. It has like the weird cross and kilt guard on the bottom. Oh don't forget my favorite. The wind uh, wind tunnel. Oh his wind tunnel? The symbiote that also lives in his hand. Which also for D he's actually a Dempier. Which is what we call a half breed in this anime. Kind of like Blade. He's Blade. Yeah he's essentially he's like the original version. Uh Okay, I don't know about original version. I can't. I don't know when Blade actually came out in Marvel. Sixties, I think it is. 70s? It's like sixties or seventies, I want to yeah. say. So it's not a foreign concept, but something a little bit different than this. It's okay. Somebody will crack this probably. Yeah, because he's kind of cool. Because he has like a more like slim armor setting underneath him, but then he has like the giant cape that he definitely like spreads out more of like vampire fire kind of appearance. I don't know. He reminds me a little bit of Van Helsing. So yeah, especially I. I hate to say it, but like the newer Van Helsing with uh, Hugh Jackman. What's wrong with that movie? A lot of things. Absolutely nothing. I remember watching that and possibly falling asleep in a movie theater. Yes. We <laughs> were watching something. And he also has a little symbiote in his hand that talks back to him on occasion. Which, in the book, works. Because they kind of explained it to you prior to things really happening. Because you hear like, oh, there's some weird talking. And then they go into it while... At this, you kind of just already expected to know that there's something living in his hand. Yeah, when Because he starts talking to him, and you're just like, who the fuck is that? Well, Does he have, like, a split personality disorder or something? Which would have been awesome, but... All I want to see in that all is just reminding me of Miggy, and it was like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> I'll shut it for you. I was the to cut it off repeatedly. All right, this is like, he's going to cut off his D. And then for Count Lee, he's a pretty stereotypical-looking vampire, just... Normal Dracula garb, older appearance. Kind of like the, uh... Dracula 2000? No, I'd say more like Dracula Dead and Loving It with Leslie Nielsen. Oh. Definitely reminds me a lot more of that, just in a more bulked up appearance. 
They also have his daughter, who, spoiler, is also a dampier. Doesn't know it pretty much for the majority of the movie. Steve, you're, you're, destroying, a, you're destroying a movie for you. I hope these people have seen this. I liked his daughter. She was amazing. She was like, I can live as a poor? Oh, fuck this. I'm jumping in this dying <laughs> building with my dad. I can't go back to living poor. I'm too high class. Yeah. I'm just gone. Dead. She, she just walks into the, the falling building and just, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> she, she wasn't going to go back. No way she was going to live poor. Yeah, I also like in the movie, too, where she has, like, very short hair, and then she also has the more revealing garb set as well. Because her skirt, also, I don't know why, but, like, all the girls' skirts in this kind of, like, go off to the side so you can still see legs. 80s, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and then you also have the other bad guy, which you don't, like, okay. So he looks human. The guy wants to become a vampire, which is kind of why he's a bad guy. But then they call him a mutant? Because he has special like, abilities. Ben time even like or bend like space so that like when a sword's going into him he can have it going through D but he only uses it once for reasons Christopher Ray he's just kind of a very skinny individual with a really elongated neck for some odd reason oh yeah there's some scenes where you're like what is that like is that his neck he's like prepare to die <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> he's like please just any spot he also has like this weird double edged knife that kind of works like a boomerang that was so weird. Like, he just makes it do all I know, kinds the, of If things. I remember right in the book, I think he controls it by, like, telepathy. That's how he kind of gets it to do what he wants. That would explain a little bit. God, I wish they would explain that in a movie. Yeah, they don't really. Like, again, they kind of just assume that you know a lot of stuff. They're just like, hey, it's in the future, so futurist things are going to happen. Unacceptable. I just thought it was a weird knife that he could throw it and aim it and cut, it, cut things in certain shapes and fly everywhere. Just... I don't know. And what's also kind of neat about this movie, but then again, kind of is one of the reasons why the plot seems a little jumbled, is he fights a lot of things in this movie. Oh, yeah, a lot of things. There's like that witch in the bottom of the castle, or... Yeah, you also have the uh, the three serpent girls he fights. You also have the three guards of the castle he fights, too. With the guy that shoots spiders out of his back, the giant, and then the weird flying dude. And then he fights the mist monster. He fights... Uh, Ray, Count Lee, kills just a lot of random things running through a tunnel. The spirit Fox, or whatever that thing is. Oh, no, it was, yeah, it's like the Spirit Panther, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but that was the witch lady. I guess it says, who was hiding in another monster when he kills her. She's like, <laughs> oh, that was weird. He just cut that guy up and she fell out. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, then you also have the, uh... The douchey mayor's son, which I actually, I cannot remember that guy's name. It's okay, he's a douche, he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's just kind of always hitting on Doris. He's like, hey, I can, I'm the mayor's son, I can spend money and give vampire hunters if you give your body to me. Which she was like, no. But then like, she sees the first vampire hunter, she's like, you can sleep with me if you want. Yeah, which seems kind of weird. Like, I kind of understand being strong-willed, but then again, it's like, so you'll whore yourself to somebody else, but yet you won't do it to somebody that actually has money and could afford the things. Because that guy probably could have just bought D anyways. Because there's another Vampire Hunter D movie, which he kind of just gets his services paid for on that. So it's, I imagine it's not hard to get a hold of the guy. Yeah, so it's just weird. I, I, it's, it's it's 80s, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, odd, odd choices. Uh, for the fights in this anime, they're pretty decent. Because a lot of it's very just like stopping and then it's like there's kind of extra going on and then it moves on to another scene and stuff like it's not like you hawks or dvz quality yeah I, I, I don't know I, I didn't feel the fighting on this one it was just like one swing here one swing there moving on to the next scene you know yeah it's very hit and miss like there's a lot of really awesome imagery for the fights yeah but like the fights itself but a lot like, of it's more like i don't want to say still frames but it's like this thing happens shift to this thing happens shift to this thing happens fight's over yeah. The longest fight was with the final guy, and that was, what, like 30, 40 seconds? Yeah, with Count Lee. Yeah, yeah I'd say it's like a minute or two. Something like that. Yeah, so... Which, even in that fight, there's not a whole lot that really happens back and forth. It's pretty much like a couple of moves happen, and we're done. The one uses Jedi powers, and the other one's like, I'll resist, and... Yeah, there's a lot of force powers used in this. Which, I kind of... Uh, we're going to probably try to review the movie for next week, the newer one, which actually has a lot of really crazy fight scenes in it. So hopefully it'll be better than this one. 
in terms of fight scenes, I definitely, if you guys haven't seen Blood Loss, it's definitely, it's more solid than this one is. But then again, the animation of that thing's like, oh, it's one of the reasons, like, I really got into Vampire D is I saw the Blood, well, sorry. I saw this one first when I was a kid. Because what happened was when we first moved into my old house when I was five, my mom was moving stuff in. It was like nine o'clock at night and she was just like flipping through the channels and she found a cartoon on the sci-fi channel. Oh, God. <laughs> she was like, cool, yeah, you can just, here, watch this cartoon, I'm going to go finish moving some stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool, sweet. And it was Vampire Hunter D. She was like, boobies and blood. Boobies, blood. <laughs> Guys, I like, I remember the scene very vividly where Count Lee kills Ray by exploding his head. Oh, God, he used him like a pinball. He was like, dee, 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 and tilt. Bam. Yeah, and then he's just like pressed up against the wall and his head goes. <laughs> I remember as a kid, like, you don't see that in cartoons every day. <laughs> and then my mom walked into that part. I was like, oh, God, what are you watching? And then I get yelled at because it's like I turned the channel. <laughs> You're a bad kid, Steve. I know, know, right? It's okay. I think I was six when I saw Aliens, so it's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mom, my mom shows me, like, Aliens when I'm, like, again, six. Yeah. So it's, it's like, really? Like, I remember I being seven, and I had, like, a bunch of the Kenner toys and stuff. Like, it was awesome. So Watching Terminator then. Yeah, it's like Terminator, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Weird combination. You know what movie I watched when I was really young? That Cobra with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, yeah. I remember watching Rambo uh, Commando with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, all those. Lift off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> God, our childhood was amazing. I know. <laughs> it's like I tried to like, get my little bro to watch like Alien Now and he's like 12. And I still could not get him to watch it. Yeah, he's like, it's kind of scary, blah, 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 blah. Kanan is s- seven or eight when he wa- when we watched all the aliens together. Yeah. No, I've been trying to get my little brother to watch it forever, but he's like, oh, it's scary. I don't really want to watch it. I've got bad dreams. Even Lillian, she's five and she watched Aliens 2. Hey, Alien 2 is a little more acceptable, except for the one the kid gets the yeah. <laughs> chest burster coming out of him. I didn't want to introduce her to four. She does not need to learn about Pumpkinhead yet. But she needs to appreciate Ron Perlman for all his glory. That is true. That is true. And then also for this anime, like, the dialogue, it's not bad. Like, the voice acting in it's actually pretty decent, especially for something back then. I Because no there's idea. some of those old ones, like, especially when you get, like, to some really old ones like Gigantor, where you're just like, what the hell am I hearing? <laughs> I don't know who the voice actors were in this one, so I have no idea. Yeah, this one, I'm not 100%. I know Bloodlust actually has some more named actors in it. I'd actually have to look it back up who's in it. There's, like, this one older comedian that's in it a lot. Yeah, that'll be possible We'll find week. it out next week. But one thing that's really cool about this anime is just how kind of dark and gritty it is. Yeah. Like, it's one of the more, I guess, horror movie-inspired animes I actually own. Because, again, there's not really too many animes that are actually what I would consider scary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You weren't scared of watching High School DXD? It's about demons. Yeah. Weird, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Why was I terrified watching Monster Masume? There's monsters in it. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Even Tokyo Ghoul. It's not like... It's cool. Not scary, How's though. Tokyo Ghoul scary, though? Like, it's under horror section. So. Yeah, it's still kind of like horror-ish. Like, I guess you could say the same thing about Parasite, in a way. But the anime is definitely in more of a horror setting, at least. Because, again, it's a lot of vampires, werewolves, you name it. Probably going to see something reminiscent of it in this movie. Actually, like, I like this movie. It, like, I feel like I need to go home and watch Van Helsing for some odd reason after watching this. Yeah, especially for how old it is, it's sweet. Like, D is an awesome character, and the anime yeah. works. I like his, like, silent type kind of character where he, not a lot of words had to be said. It's just all action. Yeah, it's also pretty refreshing watching, like, these older animes because, like, a lot of the heroes nowadays are very talkative, very cocky. They don't shut up. Or, ew, vagina. She was Which like, I guess D's kind of this, in the same sense, but... No, no, he wasn't. She's like, I love you. He's like, I know, baby. Yeah, then the next thing... It's like evil dad Why didn't you want to be with her? So is it because you're a vampire? Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, shut up, Ian. <laughs> I will cut you. I thought he was cool with it. Yeah, he seems fine. It's kind of like that in like a lot of the books and stuff where like there's the like female protagonist in it as well. Where they kind of start having some affection towards him. He's just like, Not I'm just here to hunt. He's got one purpose and one purpose only. 
Which is cool, too, because I guess he doesn't really fall in love with anybody that you come across in these movies, or even the books and mangas. How many mangas and books is there? Oh, good question. I don't, I, was like, I don't even own them all. I have, like, eight of the books. Oh. God, I hope we don't, there isn't that many movies, is there? Well, there's only two. Oh, okay. Which okay. is the depressing part, because D is one of those movie series that needed more. Before you say anything, you should watch that new Netflix original, that one, uh... Something six. This has got Adam Sandler in it. It was made by no. him. No. Yes, you I do. already read the reviews. No. Just, don't judge. I cannot get into Adam Sandler. No, don't judge. It's got Terry Crews in it. And he plays a piano with his schlong. It's winning. Trust me. <laughs> it's winning. Trust me. It is amazing. You guys really need to watch Vampire Hunter D. Have you guys watched Vampire Hunter D? Please let us know in the comments section below. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, and become a ranger today. And I am not watching Ridiculous 6. Bye-bye. You should. Bye.